the lunar mansions explained. The mansions of the moon. About the mansions. Everyone knows the zodiac that consists of the twelve signs, from Aries to Pisces. That zodiac is strongly associated with the sun. The sun completes its journey around the sky in twelve months, and so there are twelve signs, each of them covering thirty degrees, or one forward slash twelve part of the ecliptic. There also exists another zodiac, the lunar one. Traditionally, it was considered to be more important than the solar zodiac as the moon is much closer to the earth than the sun, and so is a much stronger connection to the events that take place on the earth. The moon completes the full circle against the stars in about 27.322 days, so-called Sida Eel Una month, and in every school of traditional astrology, be it Indian, Chinese, Arabic, or European, exists or existed, a division of the sky in several sections corresponding to the moon's one-day journey. Some systems, like the contemporary Hindu astrology, use 27 divisions, others prefer 28. In fact, in Hindu astrology, Chiotish, there is an alternative scheme with 28 divisions. We are going to concentrate on the Western astrological tradition which was strongly influenced by Arabic astrology and so uses the system of 28 divisions called lunar mansions, or the mansions of the moon, if you prefer. Dividing 360 degrees of the moon's path around the sky into 28 sections, we get 12.857 degrees, or 12 degrees, 51 minutes, and 26 seconds of arc for the size of each lunar mansion. Since the solar zodiac is so well established, the position of the mansions in the sky is customarily expressed in signs and degrees of the solar zodiac. For example, the third of the mansions, Althuraya, extends, approximately, from 25 degrees 43 of Aries to 8 degrees 34 of Taurus. You will notice that lunar mansions have Arabic names, and different sources offer different variations of these names. I am going to use the names from the translation of Picatrix by John Michael Greer and Christopher Warnock. I will give you the details of the sources of information I use, but for practical purposes, it might be easier to simply refer to the mansions by number. How the mansions of the moon can be used Different mansions are appropriate for different purposes. Traditionally, they were frequently used for talismanic magic, and one of the most ancient sources of information available to us, Picatrix, concentrates exactly on this use of the mansions. The mansions of the moon were also used for selecting the most appropriate day for various activities which is demonstrated by the Ashmal 396 medieval manuscript. As quotations from the Mansions of the Moon book by Christopher Warnock will demonstrate, the mansions can also be used when answering a multitude of questions. Finally, there is no reason why we shouldn't use the Mansions of the Moon in natal astrology, and both Warnock and Volgin support this idea. The traditional approach would be to consider the mansion in which the person's natal moon is, and then make conclusions regarding the character and the destiny of the person. However, Volgin argues that it might make sense to also consider the position of other important planets in the mansions, and I do find that the mansion of the natal sun can be very descriptive. The Sources of Information About the Mansions of the Moon the earliest sources of information about the mansions of the moon are the Book of Instruction in the Elements of the Art of Astrology by Albiruni and Picatrix. The book by Albiruni, written around 1000 CE, was defined by its translator R. Ramsey Wright as a primer of 11th century science. Among many other things, it lists the 28 mansions of the moon and explains which stars belong to each of them. However, Albiruni doesn't offer any interpretations for the mansions. Picatrix, according to its translator Christopher Warnock, 
is an encyclopedic Arabic compilation made of much earlier magical and astrological texts. It was originally composed around the same time as al biruniyas book while translated into Latin in 1256 CE, and many other sources of information on the mansions of the moon make use of Picatrix in one or another way. These are a compilation of more contemporary sources of information. 1. Christopher Warnock, The Mansions of the Moon Oluna Zodiac for Astrology and Magic, Renaissance Astrology, 2010 This is probably the most recent of the systematic works of the Mansions of the Moon. It brings together many sources and ideas and it also contains images for the mansions created by Nigel Jackson based on descriptions given in Picatrix. Mansions of the Moon 2. Alexandre Volgin, A Lunar Astrology, ASI Publishers Incorporated, 1974 This book is predominantly about the mansions of the moon, but it also offers a few other ideas related to the moon. Volgin brings together Chinese, Hebrew, Indian and Arabic sources to provide comprehensive, although sometimes contradictory, descriptions of the mansions. 3. Henry Cornelius Agrippa of Netsheim, 3 Books of Occult Philosophy, Lou L. in Publications, 2013. This fundamental astrological and magical work was written in the 16th century. Two sections are devoted in this book to the mansions of the moon. The first section gives their descriptions, the second explains how they are used in magic. 4. Ashmal 396 Manuscript is a medieval manuscript from the collection of Elias Ashmal, a celebrated English antiquary, politician, and astrologer who lived in the 17th century. I used the version of the text of this manuscript offered in Appendix E of the Mansions of the Moon book by Christopher Warnock. I will use these sources to explain each mansion of the moon. I am quoting them. These are not my interpretations. These were written in a land far away and a time long ago. When slavery was a common practice. These interpretations are from medieval times. I stress this is not the astrology that consists of the twelve signs that are strongly associated with the sun. This is the lunar zodiac, which at one time was considered to be more important than the solar zodiac. The moon is much closer to the earth than the sun, and has a much stronger effect and connection to the events that take place on the earth. The moon's influence moves the almost incalculable weight of the oceans. Like the rhythm of the tides that affect these oceans. The moon affects everything that walks crawls, slithers, swims or flies. If you do not think it affects us as human beings you are mistaken. This is just a brief introduction. I will next begin with each of the mansions of the moon. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. That's the signpost up ahead your next stop, the twilight zone.